Hey you! Have you ever wanted to be a healer in Final Fantasy XIV, but the thought of being responsible for a whole team gives you anxiety? Well worry not, Lolly Ho, cause this cat boy's got a general healing guide just for you. Let's get into it! Before we talk about how to heal, we have to understand that there are two different types of healers. First, you have your tree huggers, aka pure healers. White mage and astrologian use the power of the earth, nature, and stars to heal you, and if you saw them at a mall, they would be the weird ass hippie chick trying to convince you of the healing power of crystals. Pure healers all dropped out of high school, and as such, they only heal after damage has already happened. But what these underachievers lack in brain cells, they make up for in big fat heals. The other type of healers are the sci-fi bookworms, aka shield healers. Instead of getting girlfriends in high school, Scholar and Sage spent all their time reading books to impress their parents. The lonely nerds use the power of knowledge to shield and defend their teams from taking damage before it happens. Yes, they graduated college with a 9.0 GPA, but they are still maidenless. And don't worry, no matter what healer you pick, you're always guaranteed to have to fix DPS players' mistakes. Once you've picked your healer, it's time to learn how to pregame. Before we get into mid-combat healing, we have to talk about pregaming. Yes, like dinner plans with your disappointed parents, a little pre-gaming isn't required but will definitely make your encounter less painful. At least until it wears off and you need to order another bottle of wine. The art of pre-gaming is different depending on what type of heal you are, so let's talk about that. If you're one of the tree huggers, the first thing you should do before entering a fight is cast an AoE regen or a single target regen on your tank. By now you're probably asking, but why should I cast regen? No one is missing health. Well, high school dropout, the point in casting regen before a fight isn't to heal, it's to give yourself a buffer period between the first couple of casts and a fight. If you're the wannabe C tier Yu-Gi-Oh player Astrologian, you're going to want to cast a regen and pull a card. Pulling a card before the fight starts puts your card pull on cooldown while you have one card in your pocket letting you get two card buffs off early in the fight. Also, use Earthly Star before a boss fight. It won't cause you to take aggro unless it explodes. Now, if you're one of the bookworms, you're going to want to apply an AoE shield or a single target shield on your tank, again giving you a buffer period where you can cast another shield spell or do damage. If you're a scholar, make sure you have your fairy summoned. And if you're the Gundam Reject Sage, you should never go into a fight without having Cardia applied on a tank. And now that the pregame is out of the way, let's talk about combat healing. You ever find yourself in the middle of a fight as healer and everything seems to be on fire around you? Well, idiot, it's probably because you're not standing in the right place. Combat healing is one part game sense, one part placement. Let me put it this way, you can't cast spells if you're having to move out of targeting circles every 2 seconds. Healers are not melee DPS and for the most part, don't have to be right on top of the enemies to do damage. I mean for Christ's sake, you're a caster, act like it. Being a healer standing one yalm away from a boss or group of enemies is like being Marvel's worst avenger. You have a perfectly good bow and arrow, why the fuck are you standing within kissing range of your enemies? Honestly, you're more likely to give your enemies a blowy rather than do damage standing that close. Another mid-combat healing, just a tip, is to stop healing. I know, I know, this sounds counterintuitive. I mean, your literal job is to heal, right? And yeah, your job is to heal, but not when your tank or DPS is missing an ass hair of health. Overhealing is when you're throwing out heals for no reason, and it's far worse than literally standing still and doing nothing. Overhealing has no impact on people who don't need health, and it's also denying yourself damage output. Our lord and savior Yoshi P gave healers damage buttons for a reason, so use them. The other terrible thing about overhealing is that you waste the most important resource a healer has, MP. 
No amount of lucid dreaming is going to save you when you waste half your MP bar doing nothing beneficial. Overhealing also just sets you up for failure later on in a fight. Hard to heal a team when you have no abilities off cooldown. If you want the secret power to stop overhealing, keep these words in mind. More than one HP is good enough for thee. Now this isn't literal advice, please don't believe your teammates at 1 HP. The mantra is more like a condom, while ultimately it can't keep you from blowing your healer load too early before anything has happened, keeping it in mind at the very least might save you from making the worst mistake of someone else's life, or dungeon run. Remember nerds, doing damage as a healer is cool, and so is wearing a condom. Although, you're gamers, so you probably will never get to use one. The last healing pro tip is a big one. Always use swift cast to revive someone. All healers have some version of revive and all healers have swift cast. Swift cast being a skill you can use that makes your next spell insta cast. Too many times have I seen a healer try to hard cast raise only to be forced out of it by a targeting circle and then start the whole process of hard casting all over again like a shit version of Groundhog Day. Except in this version, Bill Murray is a corpse in perpetual agony watching a healer fail over and over again. Hard casting raise is a waste of time and will only lead to getting your team killed during a boss fight or dungeon run. Now it's time for some rapid fire tips. This is more of an everyone tip, but please, dear god, go to Hall of the Novice. It will teach you the basics of every class. For all my sages out there, sage is like a woman with a G cup, top heavy. You don't have many panic buttons, so it's really important to keep your tank's barrier up as much as possible. For all my white mages out there, watch your MP bar. White mages guzzle MP like white women guzzle wine. Astrologians. Well, honestly, there's not much to say other than pray for better RNG. Your card pulls may suck sometimes. Scholars, you are still the main healer. Your fairy is there for support, not to carry the whole team while you endlessly ruin and broil. Last but not least, don't be afraid to rescue. If you know the boss mechanics and you know you're standing in the right place, but a DPS or a tank isn't, rescue them. They'll get over it, I promise. Look, I know I spent this video calling you high school dropouts and failures, but honestly, I want you to be good healers, and I know you all can be. I did this video because I want you to be equipped to play a healer and not feel stressed out or confused or scared. Healing can be really fun if you're equipped and prepared for the challenges ahead. I also just wanted to flaunt my healer superiority, but also you're all still bottoms. If you like this video, leave a like and sub. If you want me to make more quick guides on tanks or DPS or go into detail about each type of healer, let me know. Until next time. Peace.